What's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. I've got a couple of interesting stories for you guys today. The first story that I've got for you guys today, a off-season, well, I guess you could say post-retirement, physique update from Flex Lewis. So as you guys know, not too long ago, Flex Lewis officially announced that he was going to be retiring from professional bodybuilding entirely. There will be no men's open bodybuilding comeback. There will be no 212 comeback. Flex is done, and I think overall that's a good thing. He's focusing on his family. He's focusing on his health, and that's evident in this physique update. So someone, he did like one of those Q&A things on his story where people ask you to show a picture and he showed his current physique and he showed right after that how much he's weighing and he weighs about 213 pounds. And obviously in that picture, he's significantly downsized from what we were used to seeing from Flex, which again, I think is a good thing overall because at the end of the day, when these guys retire, I've said it before, I feel like there is a lot of pressure, especially on pros, to maintain a certain amount of size, to maintain a certain image. Even though there's not any incentive from a competitive standpoint to keep that size or to keep doing the things that they would need to do as a pro, but just the expectation and the pressure from fans, maybe the pressure from ego. So I think it's good to see that Flex can openly post that he is downsizing because obviously when he was competing, he would struggle to make weight for 212. And right now in his off season, he's obviously not prepping for anything because he's retired. He's right around that weight. So he's obviously a lot smaller than he was when he was actively competing um, or thinking about competing. Now, let's talk a little bit about this upcoming show, the Puerto Rico Pro, which is this weekend, which will be the next Olympia qualifier. This is going to be the next opportunity for some of these guys to get added to that Olympia qualified list. Um, and one of the guys that's doing this show that was originally scheduled to do classic physique and has been doing classic physique up until this point, Fabian LaRabia. So he was an Olympia qualified classic physique competitor. He was one of the top names that was constantly interjected into the conversation um, of potentially being one of the top guys in classic. He's got a really good structure. He's got really good lines, really good flow to his physique. Um, and overall, he, he is very classic and he's very good. And he also interjected himself into a lot of beef with the classic guys. But he announced for this Puerto Rico pro that he's switching to men's open bodybuilding, which I think is an interesting decision um, because he does have such a good physique. He's got really good structure. He's got really good lines. We know this, but obviously, from a size standpoint, he's a lot smaller than some of the guys doing the show. For example, one of the guys that we've been talking a lot about that's doing the Puerto Rico Pro is Hassan Mustafa. There are some really big dudes in this Puerto Rico pro lineup. And we're going to talk about that in a second, but it, it kind of makes me wonder, is there a potential if Fabian comes in shredded to the bone, he's relatively complete um, from a classic standpoint. We don't really know from, from like a men's open standpoint, how he's going to stack up. Cause we've never seen him next to these guys, but could we have like a Sean Clarita situation where Sean came from two twelve, obviously drastically smaller than the men's open guys. He was competing against at that Legion sports festival won that show, and then qualified for the Men's Open Olympia. Could we see, and I don't think we've really seen this yet, a, a really successful guy that exclusively did classic physique coming over to Men's Open Bodybuilding and doing well. The only example that I can really think of is Regan Grimes, but he came from bodybuilding, went to classic, and then came back to bodybuilding. So we never really saw a classic-only guy move to men's open. I'm excited to see how this shakes out. Maybe he does really well. Maybe he does really bad and goes back to classic, but I am excited to see what happens because I, I don't think this is the last time we're going to be having a conversation like this. I think there's a strong possibility um, that we could one day see Chris Bumstead do a men's open bodybuilding show. I know that sounds kind of crazy, but I think, I think there's a high possibility it's going to happen. Breon, for example, Breon is doing the Tampa pro. He's doing the Olympia for classic physique. But then he's, he said he's going back to 212 after that. So we're seeing a lot of these guys kind of switch between divisions and figure out really where they fit their niche the best. And I'm really, really curious to see if Fabian can pull off a top six placing here, maybe a top three placing. Could it be possible or is it just, is it not a good move? That's also entirely possible. Now, let's talk about Hassan Mustafa for a minute because we're probably going to be talking a lot about some of these guys because this is the week of the show, so we're probably going to be talking about a lot of the updates that they post. Hassan posted another video today where he says he's flat, but he's on track, and I'm assuming this is from this week, less than a week out from the Puerto Rico show. And this is really where things become kind of make or break for Hassan because he said he acknowledges that he's flat here. He obviously doesn't look as vascular or as full as he looked in some of the updates that we talked about last week. But this is the peak week type of scenario where you could see him either really nail it or completely mess things up. So this is going to be where things get interesting. If he keeps posting updates, I'll be curious to see what they look like. Um, but this is where things could get dicey. He's looked really good this entire prep. He's looked a lot better this entire prep 
then he's looked in previous preps. But all that can change in this last week. So if he feels that he flattens out too much, and I'm not, you know, I'm obviously no guru, I'm obviously no coach, I'm obviously no expert, but the potential generally where things get messed up at the last minute are guys try guys eat too much. They try to fill out too much because they feel like maybe they're too flat, maybe they need to be fuller, and then they spill over. And then they ruin their conditioning. This is where things like that can happen. And that's what we need to be watching from with Hassan. That could be the exact type of scenario that blows his midsection back out. And we've seen that he improved his midsection in a lot of the updates that we've seen. But that could be the type of thing where if he's too flat and he tries to overcompensate with carbs or whatever, that's where things can really go sideways at the last minute. So we're going to be watching closely Hassan Mustafa over the next couple of days. And of course, when he steps on stage this weekend. Um, but I still am very optimistic that... I think he's going to pull off the win here. So let's talk about a couple other names that are doing this show. Now, they haven't put out the official competitor list yet. I'm sure we're going to get that any day now. But one of the guys that's doing the show that we know of for sure is Andrea Musi. We just saw him do the Cali Pro where he took fourth. We just saw him do the Toronto Pro where he took third. And I think there's a potential for him to be one of the top placers here, this being um, the latest update from him, this most muscular here. Now, I wanted to show this because I think, honestly, comparatively, that Hassan looks a lot sharper than Andrea looks here. I think Andrea actually looks a little bit off, um, and maybe he just wasn't planning on doing Puerto Rico. I'm not really sure, but comparatively, we can still say that even though Hassan looks flat, he still looks gigantic, he still looks sharp, he still looks hard, and I think comparatively, he still looks like he would probably be the odds-on favorite to win this show, even though Andrea Musi, based on recent placings, would be one of the favorites as well. Now, another guy that's jumping in this lineup is Theo Laguerrier. We just saw him compete at these shows as well. Um, the French bodybuilder, I believe he's only 24, 25 years old. He's extremely young. Um, but this was the most recent update where we got kind of a full profile of his physique at nine days out from the Puerto Rico Pro. His conditioning still looks like he's pretty on point. So he, to me, looks like a bigger threat than Andrea Musi at this point. So right now, these are kind of the guys that I'm looking at that we know of that are doing the show. Is is mostly Theo and Hassan. But you guys will have to let me know what you guys think in the comment section below based on what we know so far about who's in this show. And again, I'll keep you guys updated when we get the list and we'll talk about who, who's on that list. I'm sure there's going to be some names that maybe maybe we don't expect on there. But um, so far, I think Hassan has a strong, strong possibility of winning this show and getting his Olympia qualification, assuming everything goes according to plan during this peak week. Now, along the same lines as the first story, the next story that I wanted to talk about was an, a recent training video from Dexter Jackson. So similar to Flex Lewis, Dexter Jackson is obviously well into his post-retirement phase of his career. And Dexter has been also downsizing accordingly. And I think I really think we should like make a habit out of talking about the guys that retire and downsize and still look athletic, they still look good, um, but point out that they're doing what's really, at the end of the day, best for them despite the pressure not to do that. I mean, think about a guy like Dexter. He was a competitive pro for decades. For decades, he looked like an IFBB pro bodybuilder. That's got to be a really hard shift to make that decision that, okay, for my health, for my longevity, it's time to make that switch and, and not push it like I was pushing it. And I'm not going to look the way that I've looked for a very, very long time. So I really think that as much as we talk about the mass monsters and the freaks and how big this guy is or this guy's 300 pounds at whatever weeks out, I think we should also make a point to talk about the guys that are in this latter half of their career or post-career um, and are making the decision to downsize and streamline their physiques. And I think we should encourage that and not necessarily say, oh, this guy, he doesn't look like he used to look. That's a bad thing. I, I think we should be saying this is a good thing and we should be you know, acknowledging it. And look, I think Dexter looks great here. I would rather see Dexter this size and be around for the next 40 years at Expo signing autographs or whatever than for Dexter Jackson to be the same size he was as a pro and maybe not be around for 20 more years. Now, the final story that I've got for you guys today, I'm sure a lot of you guys saw this because I saw that a lot of you guys sent this to me. A post by Dan Solomon, the president of the Olympia. He recently met with Phil Heath. Now, Dan Solomon in these posts it often raises a lot of speculation when Dan meets with somebody that hasn't competed at the Olympia for a while. The speculation is always, were they talking about the potential of him competing? If you guys remember, another another big example of this was way back when um, Dan had a meeting with Kai. And actually, Dan offered Kai the special invitation, whatever year that was. Um, and it was a picture very similar to this that kind of spawned this speculation that Kai was going to come back, which obviously we now know Kai's never coming back. So look, the question on everybody's mind after seeing this post, 
is will Phil ever compete again? A. And B, if he does compete, will it be the Olympia? We've had this conversation a thousand times at different, at different points in you know this post-2020 version of Phil. And I probably could just message Phil right now and ask him, but I don't think he would tell me either way. And if he did tell me, I think it would be off the record. But we, we have a relationship now where we talk, and I feel like I could ask him, but I don't think he would give the real answer at this point. My gut feeling on it is that he will compete again. However, I think it's much more likely that he would do either the Arnold Classic or the Rock Show, Athleticon slash Icon World Classic, if that thing ever actually does come to fruition, which I understand they are trying to make it happen for 23. You could make a strong argument that Phil is not past his prime yet. He's in his early 40s, very early 40s. And I think you could make a very strong argument that if Phil did do the Arnold Classic, he could possibly win that show. And I think you could make an extremely strong argument that if you did this Icon World Classic slash Athleticon, whatever it ends up being called, that he would win that as well. But I think you could make a less strong argument that he would win the Olympia. I'm not saying it's impossible, but I think it's less likely. So let's say that right now Phil is considering competing again, or in his mind he says he is going to compete again one last time. That's going to be like his swan song. That's going to be where he gives his retirement speech and formally announce retirement. That's where he's going to end the documentary that he's been filming. Let's say that is his plan, is to compete again. It's got to be going through his mind, the different scenarios and the different probabilities of how he's going to do at these shows. If he did Athleticon, Icon World Classic, probably extremely high probability that nobody's going to beat him there. It's not going to be, it's probably not going to be Olympia caliber. There's probably going to be some of the top guys missing. It's probably not going to be quite Arnold Classic caliber. There's probably going to be even less guys uh, missing from that lineup. I mean, less guys there that are on the top level at Athleticon than comparatively to an Arnold Classic or Olympia. So he's got to be thinking if he does want to do one more show, he if he did the if he did the Athleticon show, it's still pretty prestigious because it's associated with the Rock. There'd be a lot of hype behind it because it's new. We've been kind of teased with it for years now, and it kind of got delayed because of the pandemic. He would also cement himself as the first ever winner of that show, so it would put him kind of in a new category as far as bodybuilding history is concerned. He's already won the seven Olympia titles. That's already that's already bodybuilding history, but he hasn't won at least not that I know of, a title for the first time in the States. The New York Pro obviously has been around for a long time. It was Night of Champions before that. Arnold Classic's been around for a long time. But this would be another big show, a mainstream mainland U.S. show. And it's probably it's probably going to be successful. It's probably going to have um, a bright future. And Phil could be the first ever champion of that show and end his career on a really high note. And that would be statistically probably the most likely show for him to win, and he's affiliated with The Rock and Danny Garcia. So that's my opinion. I I do kind of feel that Phil will compete again, and I do kind of feel if I were Phil, that's how I would be weighing out the options, and that's kind of how it would be playing out in my mind, is I would want to do the show that I've got the highest probability of winning. Not an easy show, but a show that's still going to be prestigious, it's going to be around for a while, and it would still be a, a, a very big deal, and there'd be a lot of hype around it, enough hype that it could be included in the documentary. So that's going to wrap it up for the video today, guys. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you have not subscribed yet already. Click that bell notification icon before you guys go. But make sure you like the video. That's the most important, that's the most important by far. Thumbs up the video. Get it into the algorithm. Love you guys. Appreciate you guys. Nick Strength and Power signing out.